How does the summing mixer work? Starting off, a summing mixer is designed to improve the way that we sum all the stems in our tracks together and gives us, as mixing engineers, a way to create a more three-dimensional sounding mix. So how does it do that exactly? Well, each track in the summing mixer exhibits an important set of properties, known as non-linearities. In the analog world, nothing is ever perfectly 100% linear. There is always some change that we can perceive, and sometimes can't. This is one of the reasons people prefer analog, because even though the device is performing much of the intended processing, it isn't perfectly linear. And the non-linearity ends up making the music feel, well, alive. When doing that across a spectrum of, say, 16 tracks in a mix, it really starts to add up and give the mix greater separation, stereo image, punch, clarity, depth, width, and dimension. Now, when you take that and combine it with choosing between running each track through a Neve, APR, or RED47 transformer, the result is almost like having three consoles in the palm of your hand, and you get to choose which track you want to run each one through. We've finished our design, we've finished the unit, and we've currently been testing our very first interconnected sessions with the new graphical user interface and with pretty amazing results. We'll get to hear those pretty soon. It's going to be moving into public beta as soon as we receive our new converters, which we are so excited about. I'm very close to revealing what converters those are, but it's going to enable us to have a drag and drop custom chain functionality in any way that you as the customer want. As soon as the converters arrive, we're going to be moving towards opening public beta with the summing mixer and 1084 to all of our unlimited subscribers. And after that, we should release it in full, in its final form a couple of weeks later. Take note, this is going to be running on Mix Analog 3.0. Make sure that you subscribe to the unlimited bundle to get early access. Right, let's talk about some audio tech news that happened in the last week. Apple just announced that they're releasing the Mac Studio, which is comprised of a 20-core double M1 Ultra chipset, giving users the smallest form factor, the quietest operation, with absolutely massive power. Beating out CPU competitors such as Ryzen chipsets, as well as beating out an NVIDIA 3090 GTX for video work, and offering Mac users a cohesive way to utilize ARM native optimization in their music creation, video workflow, and more. It's slightly pricey, but for what you're actually getting, it's definitely worth it for a studio that's serious about the power they need to handle those intensive Pro Tools projects. Waves just released Clarity VX, an amazing one-knob solution to removing background noise, audio issues, and more by using AR in a way that doesn't seem to take as much CPU toll as RX plugins, while offering a much better result. I've heard some pretty amazing before and afters, enough to make me want to buy it myself. It looks to me like there is a new wave of AR-based plugins that's about to take the world by storm. In other news, iLock gets full Apple Silicon support, so it now runs natively on M1 chipsets and beyond. It's great to see more developers moving towards the shift to M1, and I've even heard they had to completely rewrite the code for this from scratch. Kudos to Arlock for finally getting around to it. Universal Music has just suspended its operation in Russia and is following the process of similar actions made by a few music rights organizations. I think it's absolutely great that all of these companies are putting pressure on Russia to move them forward into rising up. But something about this did slightly concern me. My question would be, with the American Royalty Collection Agency BMR, the UK one and the Italian one, all ceasing operations with the Russian Collection Agency, what exactly does this mean for money that's accumulated and legally owed to the artists in Russia for intellectual property that's being played? It's well known that Royalty Collection Agencies tend to take a while to pay out, which means that they could be holding a lot of money that, simply put, isn't theirs to begin with. Of course, Russia and Ukraine is a totally touchy subject, and nothing hurts me more than to see the devastation that Ukrainian people are facing. But I also don't want to fail to recognize that Russian musicians are human beings too. 
As complex as this may be, I sincerely hope that the collection agencies can pay out the money owed to the artists and then simply cease operations as needed. I think one of the most important things I'm learning from this is how important love, compassion and kindness is for every human being on the planet. And with that slightly depressing note, I want to say thank you for joining us in our weekly catch up. Let's love each other, let's make amazing music, let's support each other and keep building one of the best music families around. I can't wait to see you next week and hopefully with some more exciting Mix Analog 3.0 news. Take care and see you soon. Bye.